so you your family decided to 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 leave but that's not it's not as easy as that right i mean you don't just up sticks and go i mean how how do you get your family from afghanistan to to pakistan is it yes um you're absolutely right i think it's incredibly tough decision to leave your home country yeah everything you've built that my father had bought this house before the war started and he was earning good money before yeah. the war and he had to leave everything first of all to save his life but now this time to save the entire family and for us to be together mm-hmm. but the alternative is for us not to be together for him to die and maybe for us to die as yeah. well so that makes the decision easier and that was that's why millions of afghans left afghanistan mm-hmm. uh, so nearly about I'm not sure about 3 to 4 million people at that time they left the fled the normal routes were closed so the only route available the borders between afghanistan and pakistan were mm-hmm. closed by the soviet pak government they didn't want people to leave so people had to flee really through whatever way they could find uh, and it was a, a very dangerous route through mountain valleys and rivers taking 7 days 7 nights wow. that we had to take as a caravan of 20 25 family right traveling at night time on donkeys and horses um so we were not visible to the spy planes and the helicopter gunships and the jets because there was a point in that trip in in the, in that uh exodus wasn't there where where you and your father got targeted we did so one morning um it was becoming lighter we all decided where well, the men decided that you know it was enough traveling let's find somewhere to hide and stay during the day so the station all the horses um the families the women under the tree uh, the men went to find a house in the village mm-hmm. i insisted that i would come with my father mm-hmm. as well and it was halfway as traveling from the trees to the village that we were spotted by a spy plane and my father knew what was coming so he took me in his arm he ran towards the village um and it was within 4 or 5 minutes the frantically he was looking for somewhere to hide he found an oven in one of the houses on the floor where people usually bake bread it's it's usually on the floor where they make a hole yeah but yeah. somehow he squeezed me with him in that oven towered over me um and i i still remember age 5 he told me that if anything happened to him that i was in charge i would take the family home And I think that's the time when I completely lost my childhood because <laughs> subconsciously I was made aware that I have a responsibility. It's war and I have to look after family. Um the shelling started rockets bullets everything came at us and it went on for about 6 7 minutes. Uh, after that when my dad came out we could barely see each other because there was still dust mm-hmm. and he was seeing for any bullet holes or any bleeding. miraculously we were not injured yeah uh, but my heart was pounding and i still remember that pounding heart that rush of blood from it and it's it's uh, later on contributed obviously to my ptsd as well but that's the beginning of all those sort of traumas that accumulated over years and years and years the oven saved our life and when we came out for the next few days when we were traveling we again came under the attack a couple of times and we survived those attacks again we were running on adrenaline simply trying to survive the rockets and and the later on it was the tanks as well um and now we, we, when we see the ukraine invasion yeah it, it's so close to many afghans who've lived that war or to imagine. other people who have suffered through um the soviet invasion in the past yeah so it brings back really traumatic memories oh, yeah.